Hey guys, welcome back to Keys to the Cosmos. Well, you can see I wanted to change it up a bit. I'm outside. I wanted to show you my newest rig. This is what I'm calling my summer and fall nebula rig. And hopefully you've already seen my Takahashi FSQ85. I did a brief video on sort of an overview of it. This is my newest telescope. Really excited. This has been a goal to get one of these almost since the beginning of getting into astrophotography and learning all about them. But newest to this rig, of course, is the mount. Now many of you know I already have the CEM40EC made by Optron. Well this is its smaller brother, this is the CEM26EC. So it still has the encoders, um, just like the CEM40, but this is a smaller version, it holds 26 pounds as per the name. And this is going to be perfect for my smaller telescopes, starting with the Takahashi at 450 millimeters of focal length, all the way down to my Red Cat at 250 millimeters, and of course even lower, my Ascar, maybe even a camera lens uh, should I decide to do Milky Way photography. Now having said that, I do still have my Skywatcher Star Tracker. I haven't used that in quite some time and I probably, I'm going to keep it probably only using it though for you know Milky Way photography. This is basically replacing that and it's going to obviously provide a lot better performance. Now the goal is that for most nights, at least when I feel up to it, to have two rigs running. It's a lot of work to set up and tear down two rigs so some nights I may not, but when the weather is good and I know it's going to be a good night, I'll try to have two mounts running. And this is going to be one of the main ones because we know summer nebula, they're usually big and bright. And this will be the perfect telescope along with my Red Cat to capture those and even some of those bigger galaxies like Andromeda and uh, M33. So really excited about having this. I have actually already done one image. I'll have it at the end of this video. It was just you know, it was seven hours, but it was just kind of, I picked something easy in Cygnus just to sort of test it and, you know, make some adjustments accordingly. So it's not the most amazing image, but I'll show it afterwards at the end of this video. But glad to have gotten a couple nights already with this. Um, the learning curve wasn't so bad, especially because I have the CM40. So a few things I was already used to, but there are some things I'm still trying to figure out. I think my back focus on this Takahashi is off. I've ordered a different size spacer but I'll talk more about that in the full overview so things like that I'm working out some settings on the mount um, to get the best tracking possible I'm also uh, fiddling around with but sh slowly but surely we'll get there it's nice to have an image done already so just a brief overview um, as I mentioned this is a CM CEM 26 so 26 pounds of payload uh, I'm not going to come anywhere near that this Takahashi will be the heaviest telescope that I put on it and it's around, I think, nine pounds plus, you know, the weight of the camera and, and other stuff. So we're we're not even going to go, you know, past halfway of that 26 pounds. So no problem there. Uh, solid mount, very well built. Not not as well built as the CM40. You know, it's more basic. It's all black for the most part. Um, you know, the wires are hidden within the mount, like in the CM40. There's another one on this side, but they're small and they don't get in the way. I have the GPS module, I don't know if you can see, it's, I've tacked it onto the back there, so it's nice, you just turn it on, the mount knows where it is, what time, and you can just start setting up. You will notice that I still have this little jig. Now I did a video on this, third axis balancing, and if you recall, on my CM40, I always had an issue balancing it. Even when it was balanced, um, the RA, when you had it horizontal to the ground, it wouldn't stay balanced when it was in the upright position like this. You'd unlock it and it would slowly start to tip to one side. So this is what helps correct that. It's annoying. I know some of you have mentioned there are ways to fix it. I just really don't feel like taking the mount apart at any point to adjust that. Maybe one day in the future I will. For now, this is my Home Depot fix. It's just a bolt, a clamp, and a few washers and it fixes the problem, no problem. So for now, I'm gonna stick with that. It's kind of annoying, but for the money you pay for this but it is what it is and it like I said it fixes the problem and for now I can focus on imaging other than that it's uh, you know pretty standard um, it's this is the light rock um, tripod so it's light again this is why I like these ioptron mounts in addition to great performance they're very light this is like 10 pounds the mount itself the tripod is somewhere around that as well you can easily pick this up no problem and carry it. I never take the mount apart. Same is true even with the CM40. That was the biggest reason I bought that because it is as well as quite light. It's somewhere around like 25 to 30 pounds altogether. And that's super light for that kind of payload. So that's what I love about these Ioptron mounts. In addition to being well made, 
they're super light and that really helps this one especially because I do want to travel with it um, and again with the EC the encoders just like the CM40 you pay more for it quite a bit more but uh, you know I'm already not guiding eventually I will be particularly on the bigger mount and the bigger telescopes but for this mount it'd be nice to not have to bother with guiding to just be able to set it up as quick as possible especially if I'm taking it somewhere and just start imaging so that's the main reason I bought this one and I'm hoping that I'm not disappointed but so far so good um, you can't see I'll try to show a picture I know my wires are a mess but I, I'm, I have it set up the way I'm using it at the moment so I have my power tank by Celestron powering this mount and it's also powering the ASI Air which in turn is powering the camera and then in addition I have my little dew heater here and I'm going back to my roots there with the star tracker I just have it connected to this little battery pack and it's strapped onto the leg of the tripod so that's just that power pack is powering just the dew heater and one less thing to worry about and it doesn't suck as much power out as uh, when you're using a more substantial dew heater like the one I use on my bigger telescopes and I'm relying on the ASI Air to power it which really will uh, I would say at least 50% more battery it uses so again this is great for traveling I can be able to use my power tank and it should be more than enough to get me through a night of imaging but other than that I'm going to be spending some time with it obviously um, I like I said I do still want to have both mounts out so this will be shooting obviously the bigger nebula you know um, I'm looking forward to well there's a lot tons of stuff in Cygnus and uh, you know a lot of those big summer and fall nebula but I'll still be using my bigger telescope on the CEM 40 and I'll be shooting sort of inside of some of those bigger nebula like the inside of the heart inside of M16 the Eagle um, I'll be using my ED 127 my Explore Scientific you've seen that many times on the channel I'll still be using that most nights to try and shoot more smaller stuff and to get in tight on some of the beautiful details of those bigger nebula but really excited um, as I mentioned more work to do but little by little I'll get the hang of it and I'll have more videos on both of these items and how they work and hopefully if you're thinking about getting a similar mount or similar telescope it will be informative to you now I did mention I've already taken my first picture I'll show that at the end of this video you know I wasn't going to but I thought you know what let's just try the first night I really just you know I had it out for a couple hours just trying to you know get it connected and all that stuff um, but the second night I was able to get everything connected properly get it to swing to a target so I just went to something easy I went to Cygnus of course what's easier than that and I went to the butterfly nebula I have imaged it before made a video on it looking back it's a terrible image this one's much better um, but I'm so far I'm happy with it really nice details with Takahashi and I've been doing three minute unguided exposures for the time being hopefully I'll be able to jump that up to four once I get the settings uh, straightened out a little bit better but um, yeah excited to share this with you guys excited for more videos here's my video my latest uh, image of the butterfly nebula but thanks so much guys I will see you on the next one take care